We submit to you whatever personal and selfish agenda we might have tonight. Purify even our motives for being here today. And let our experience with you tonight be an experience of worship and intimate spiritual fellowship. Lord, you know our hearts. You know our iniquities. You know all our impurities. Purify us right now. Say the word and we'll be free. Teach us, touch us with the Holy Spirit so that it is your purpose that will prevail tonight. Your agenda, your will that will happen and not ours. We lift up our hearts to you, O Lord. Bless us through spiritual blessings come only from you. And in the name of Christ, we rebuke all spirit of darkness. All work of deceit, all work of the flesh, and all spirit of vexation. In the name of Christ, O Lord, we ask you, cover us with the blood of Christ. Protect us from the evil one, even from our own personal weaknesses. And accomplish your purpose for grouping us together tonight. Your will, O Lord, not ours. Your message, not mine. And let your will be done all throughout. We lift up our hearts to you. Speak to us. Let your Holy Spirit descend upon us in full glory and power that can come only from you. And may you change us so that we will not only attend a worship service, but we would have truly worshipped. Father, we believe that you answer our prayer and we're confident of this because we ask in the will and in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our friend and teacher. Amen. Amen. How should Christians live? I do not think that we will cover a new area today, but we're going to review a very basic area that some of us tend to forget as the years pass. As we grow maturely in the Lord, there are some basic things that have to be remembered once more. And today we're going to discuss four ways to live. First of all, of course, live in Christ. We have to live in Christ. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. What does it mean to live in Christ? Recently, we have been doing some cleaning up in our neighborhood and there are we went down near a cliff. You know, our house is by a cliff. And in this cliff clings a lot of mga ipil-ipil trees and vines. And when I got down there, I realized that these trees were living on just very, very little crevices. Actually, barely clinging to the hillside because it's all made of rock. And that's all that they've been living in. Maybe they could have gotten to become greater trees had they been planted in a rich soil, in a soft soil. But they are just there clinging. And whenever there's a typhoon, they precariously cling and dangerously hold on. And many Christians live like this. We precariously cling. Hindi talaga rooted. But for us to have a victorious and a productive and a joyful and a meaningful Christian life, we must be rooted in Christ. Live in Christ. John 14, 6 says, I am the life. Si Jesus ang buhay. So unless we are rooted into Christ, nothing will happen. And uh, Psalm says, He who lives in the will of the Lord is like a tree planted by streams of water. It's important to be rooted in Christ. To be connected to Christ. John 15.5 I am the vine, you are the branches. And verse 4 says, Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. So Christian, we first have to live in Christ. That Christ is the source of our strength. Not our personal wealth. Not our personal intelligence. Not our personal circumstance. But we are strong because of Christ. Not because of anything else. That Christ is the source of our joy. That we are joyful not because we have what we want, not because what we like happens, but because Christ is in us. That we have peace, not because everything is going on well with your business or with your work, not because you recently got that promotion that you wanted, not because your husband is a very, very ideal husband, not because you have a, such a peaceful love life. No, we have peace because our peace comes from Christ. And if we are rooted in Christ, if our peace comes from Christ, troubles come, your husband might 
be gallivanting around, or you might not receive that promotion, or there's danger everywhere, but we can still have peace because the source of peace is unchanging. That's Jesus Christ. It's very important, brothers and sisters, for us to realize fully what it means to live in Christ. Na kaya ka masaya dahil kay Christ, hindi dahil mataas yung grade mo. Paano kung bumaba? Na kaya tayo maligaya, hindi dahil mayaman ka ngayon. Eh, paano kung humirap ka? Hindi dahil healthy ka ngayon. Eh, paano kung magkasakit ka? You'll never know. Maligaya tayo because we have the happiness and the joy of Christ. It's important. Yung mga tao that do not live in Christ, they live on their own strength. They live on other people's strength. Nakaasa sa iba. Pag nandyan yung tao na mahal, masaya. Pag wala, malungkot. Pag yung taong inaasahan, eh, uh, naaasahan naman, eh, masaya tayo. Pag hindi na siya naaasahan, nalulungkot na tayo. You know, these kind of people that do not live in Christ, but live in other people, live in their own selves, are very, very weak people. Parang leaf, a dry leaf that is being blown and tossed by the wind to and fro, because not anchored on the rock. Christian, you should live in Christ. If you say, oh, the source of my joy, the source of my happiness, the source of my well-being is Christ. And if that is the case, your well-being will be permanent because Christ is permanent. Christ never leaves, Christ never forsakes, and Christ never double-crosses. Mahira pag taong inasahan mo kahit sino pa yon, Kasi either bibiguin nila tayo intentionally or hanggang doon na lang yung best nila. Hindi na rin nila tayo kaya masatis. So we will be wanting. Pag inaasahan lang natin career, inaasahan lang natin turn of events, these are very, very uh, unreliable premises. So you say, do we live in Christ? You say, oh, many people turn against me, but Christ still with me. I'm still happy. Can we say this? Live in Christ. Then, number two, live with Christ. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 talks about the future that says, We will be with the Lord forever. But did you know that when you accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord, you were already with the Lord? That our eternal life, our eternal partnership actually begun? Yung church, pagka pinapakita sa Revelations, is a bride na papakasalan ni Christ. So yes, we are the bride of Christ. Sabi nyo, eh, hindi pa nagkakasalan, but we're already betrothed. We're already answered for. May engagement rin. Nandun na. The fellowship has actually begun. But Christian, do you live with Christ? Let Christ be your companion and partner and friend. Everybody else is secondary. Si Christ dapat yung best friend. Kung isan, you hear, itong best friend ko, take a correction. Dapat yata ang best friend natin si Christ. Ito yung apple of my eye. Para ito yung number one in my life. Number one. Si Christ dapat yung number one. Make your life conducive to His presence. Remember, we live in Christ and then we live with Christ. Kapag meron kayong kasama sa bahay, isinasaalang-alang ninyo ang kanyang damdamin. Diba? Kung meron kayong matandang kasama sa bahay, may mga maingay, pinapatahimik natin dahil may matanda sa bahay. Kung meron may sakit sa bahay, Everybody should be careful and not be noisy so as not to unnecessarily disturb a resting sick person. Kung meron kayong roommate, kung naranasan nyo na magka-roommate, kapatid, o dorm, meron kang roommate, syempre, sinasaalang-alang mo naman yung roommate mo. Hindi kahit kailan gusto mong kumanta, kahit tulog siya, kahit kailan gusto magbukas ang ilaw, pwede. Kasi may kasama ka eh. Nakikisama tayo because we live with other people. Mga anak, nakikisama sa mga magulang. Pag sinabi ng magulang, curfew! 7 o'clock. Sabi mo, AM, PM. Kaya nyo nagtanong, PM siyempre. O, oh, ano na ba talaga? Nakikisama ba tayo or not? Pero, come to think of it, nakikisama ba tayo kay Christ? I mean, do we live life with Christ and we respect that presence that Christ is with us? Or do we allow things to enter our lives that offend the Lord? Nabubuhay ba tayo na isinasaalang-alang at laging inaalala? Hindi kinakalimot na, teka, teka, may kasama ako sa buhay ko. Ano magiging reaksyon niya? Kakantahin ko ba dapat yan o hindi? Isusuot ko ba dapat ito or not? Kakainin ko ba ito or not? Iinumin ko ba ito or not? Gagawin ko ba ito or not? Sasabihin ko ba ito or not? Teka, may kasama ako eh. Hindi ako nag-iisa eh. Because the Lord said, I will never leave you. In that case, the Lord is always with us. 
And if we're going to always realize this, you say, Teka muna, may kasama ako. Yung gagawin ko ba, makaka-offend sa kanya or not? Ma-unsettle ba siya or not? Live with Christ. Huwag natin kakalimutan yun that the Lord said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Nandyan na siya. Kahit na i-ignore-ignore, nakakalikalimutan, nandyan na siya. Binabantayan tayo buong gabing natutulog tayo. And the least that we can do as an act of gratitude for the Lord guarding over us the whole night is pagising ng mata mo, pagbukas ng mata mo, prayer. Quiet time and meditation. Because the Lord likes to spend time with us. Binantayan ka buong gabi, pagising mo, wala, bali wala, tuloy, parang wala. Binabantayan tayo every time. Inililigtas niya tayo sa marami mga dangers. But do we have time to say, ah, ah, by the way, thank you. Do we have the time? Man lang. Or we go on living as ingrates, as if the Lord is not with us. That we continue to say things we should not be saying, do things we should not be doing, go to places we should not be going to, these kind of things. Remember, Christian, live with Christ and respect that presence of Christ in your life. Then third, live for Christ. Hebrews 13, 20-21, May the God of peace equip you with everything good for doing His will. May the God of peace equip you with everything good for what? For doing His will. Philippians 1, 21, For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And 2 Corinthians 5, 15, And He died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who died for them and was raised again. Tayo spiritually dead because Christ died for us and took our place. Nagkaroon tayong life. That life is no longer ours. We should live it for the one who died for us. There is a trade. The Lord gave us His death. We should give us our life. We should no longer live as if Libre tayo. No, somebody paid for our lives. Somebody died for you and for me. That's why sabi sa Bible, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Maraming mga Kristiyano kung mabuhay, parang walang accountability eh. Para bang kanila yung kanila. Para yung katawan nila kanila. Para yung buhay nila kanila. Hindi yan atin. Binili na yan eh. Kumbaga nakasanla na tayo eh. Tinubos. So now, the least that we could do is to live for the one who died for us. Sabi mo, Lord, die for me and I live for you. That's the trade. Let your energy, your talent, your skill, your resources be dedicated to Christ and His cause. Whether you like it or not, you will die. Pero maraming kamatayan, walang kahulugan. Namatay lang sa sarili. Namatay lang para... Mahal ko kasi siya, kaya ako nang daya. Hindi niya na klase. E di dedicate ang buhay sa walang kakwenta-kwenta mga causes. Para sa sa'yo, magpapakamatay ako. May mga ganun pa. Make sure that the things you are living for are worth dying for. Paano niyo malalaman, mga kapatid, ko ang ginagawa niyo ngayon sa buhay niyo ay mahalaga? Mahalaga. I'll tell you what. If it's worth dying for, mahalaga yan. Are you willing to die for your business? Are you willing to die for your causes? Are you willing to die for your boyfriend? Are you willing to die for this and that? Because if you are not willing enough to die for it, hindi mahalaga. And there should only be one cause that we are willing to die for, the cause of Christ. We are to live for Christ. Kahit naman mag-serve ka kay Lord, no, hindi eh, mapapagod ka rin sa maghapon, di ba? Ting dumarating ang hapon, pag lumulubog ang araw, maraming tao pagod. Yung iba na pagod sa paglilingkod, yung iba na pagod lang sa sariling mga kagustuhan. Yung iba nagpagod lang talaga para pumayat. Di ba? Talagang pagod na pagod yan, no? Naubos ang energy, talagang latang-lata, nakakain na lahat ng mga, mga vitamins para lang mag-exercise, para sumeksi. O, may napapagod ng may katuturan, may napapagod ng wala. Hindi man walang katuturan mag-exercise if it's good for your health. Pero to some people, their body is already their religion. Yun na ang pinakamahalaga sa lahat. Kapag ang inyong ginagawa ngayon, pinagbubuhusan ng pansin, pinagbubuhusan ng lakas, pinagpofokusan ng inyong attention, 
is not worth dying for, then it's not worth living for. So, live for Christ. You have only one life. To what cost will you dedicate it? I-dedicate mo yan kay Lord or not, mamamatay ka pa rin. Malalakas tayo ngayon, we're still young, tatanda ka rin. Maluluoy ka rin at manghihina ka rin. Pero ano naman ang iyong pinagkatandaan? Pagka tinitingnan mo na yung mga kamay mong namamaluktot at may mga arthritis ka na hindi na makabangon, sasabihin mo, doon namang malakas ako, naubos ang lakas ko. Para saan? Para saan? Kasi yung lakas natin, yung kabataan natin, mauubos at mauubos din yan. Pero saan natin inuubos? Saan nyo uubusin? Dapat naman yata, iniisip-isip natin yon. Live for Christ. Let your dreams, your ambitions, your aspirations revolve around Christ. At madaling makilala ang tao na ang kanyang dream, ang kanyang aspiration, ang kanyang life revolves around Christ. Because his life or her life revolves around the church. Ang schedule niya, satellite lang ng schedule ng church. Sunday sa ka-block off, Wednesdays, whatever, naka-block off lahat. Hindi nag-accommodate ng iba. Ate ka, inuunang ilagay yung schedule ng church, yung schedule ng service. At yung iba, pag hindi ma-accommodate, sorry, may nakalagay na dito. Ba, maraming mga Christians talagang madaling maglagay sa calendar nila ng church activity, kaya lang pencil para madaling burahin. Pag-party, pen tell pen. Hindi pa talaga kaya burahin yan, embossed pa. But do we make our lives revolve around the church? Madaling malaman. May debut doon, may party dito, hindi pwede, may church eh. Kasi the church is the body of the Lord. Meron pa bang iba? Yung bang save the panda movement, sinabi ba sa Bible na yun ang body of the Lord? Lions Club! Yung ba ang body of the Lord? Nakalagay ba sa church, sa Bible yun? Yung ating mga charities, yung ating mga painting club, drama club, sinabi ba sa Bible na yun ang body of the Lord? Di ba ang body of the Lord is the church? So, gano'n kahalaga ang participation natin sa body of the Lord? You cannot go on church hopping all your life. You've got to be part of a church. That if you function within the context of the church, because the church is the only institution headed by Christ. Kasi Christ is the head of the church. We've got to be a part of it. Are you living for Christ? And finally, live like Christ. First Peter 2.21 To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in His steps. Live like Christ. Romans 8.29 For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of His Son. You know, if you live in Christ, if you live with Christ, and if you live for Christ, in number four, automatic, eh, you will live like Christ. What does Christian mean? Little Christ. Pag nakikita ka ng tao, naaalala si Kristo. Pag naririnig ka ng tao, naaalala ang Diyos. Okay, kung naaalala ka, kung naiinis, iba yata yun. Di ba? Pag nakita ka... Bad day. Dahil nakita ka. Hindi yata yun ang ibig sabihin ng Christ. We are to be predestined. May purpose ang buhay. Tanungin mo yung mga iba, anong goal ng buhay? Kung ano-ano, to be successful, to be rich, to be this, blah, blah, blah. Ang goal ng buhay, maging kamukha ni Kristo. Yun ang goal ng buhay. So, sino ang successful person yung nagiging kamukha ni Kristo and getting closer and closer to the image of Christ every day? Yun ang successful person. The person may be rich or poor materially. The person may be intellectually gifted or not. Pero yun ang successful person. It's high time, Christians, that we change our concept of what a successful person is. Success can only be gauged, can only be measured according to the goal. Kaya ba, ang goal mo, magawa ito, Nagawa mo, successful ka. May goal eh. Pero ano bang goal ng buhay? To be like Christ. So, sino successful person? Yung Christ-like. Siya yun. In this weak, ganda, crooked, foolish world, may actually call a very successful person a failure. Kasi sa kanila, yung iba ang konsepto ng success eh. Kailangan marami kang PhDs, kailangan marami kang pera, kailangan marami kang... Well, maganda kung marami kang PhD, marami kang pera, pero Christ-like ka pa. Yun ang maganda. 
Pero kung marami kang PhD, marami kang pera, pero hindi ka Christ-like, failure ka. No matter what you do, failure ka. You can never convince me that you are a success. Because the true measure of success is Christ-likeness. Life has meaning. Life has a purpose. Life is short. What are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your time? Time must not be wasted in living the wrong way. How could we? How should we? How must we live? Live in Christ. Live with Christ. Live for Christ. And then you will live like Christ. Let us silently pray to ask you, Whom do you live with? Whom do you live in? Whom do you live for? Like whom do you live? Sukatin natin natin sarili dito sa apat na purposes na ng life. And let's see where the Lord can touch us. Ask the Spirit to touch you. And ask the Spirit to touch you now that it will be a life-changing, earth-shaking night. Not only sitting there and hearing a wonderful message, but really being changed by the Lord. Let the Lord speak to you in silence. And even now, as we ponder the face of the Lord, as we allow the Lord's light shine upon us, anyone here who will say, Lord, kulang po ako. Tinimbang nyo ako and you have found me wanting. But I like. To live in Christ. I like to live with Christ. I like to live for Christ. I like to live like Christ. Pero alam niyo po ang mga sagabal. But right now, Lord, I like to submit them to you. Whoever, whoever was spoken to by the Lord, and you have identified through the power of the Spirit what hinders any of these four from happening in your life, I'd like to pray for you because the Lord would like to bless us today. Just stand up where you are and I will pray for you. Let the Holy Spirit touch you. Whatever it is, you say, Lord, I am wanting. I like to recognize this. Unless I do, you will not be able to heal me. I lift up my heart to you. Touch me, heal me, make me whole. I like to be able to live a life worthy of the word Christian. You know, the Lord never imposes himself on anyone. We have to say, Lord, touch me. Whoever would like to be touched by the Lord. In a very powerful way. Stand up and let the Lord touch you. First, silently, as you are standing up, speak to the Lord. If you don't know what to say to the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to tell you, who reveals to us the will of the Father. And after some silence of personal communication with the Lord, we will all pray together. Heavenly Father, look at your children and may you have compassion as you always have. Thank you, Lord, that you never tire of restoring us, of healing us, of reaching out to us, of filling our needs and our emptinesses and our shortcomings. Take delight in these people who stand before you, O God. May you be delighted because you're always happy with a contrite heart, a heart that says, I'm broken. Lord, look into us and you will see brokenness. You will see imperfection. You will see even stubbornness. But right now, by your grace, and for Christ's sake, we offer this at your feet. All the things that hinder us from living a life worthy of Christ. You know what each one has to give up. And in standing up, O oh Lord, we're giving this up. We're burning it in your altar. Let the smoke reach you in the heavens. And may you be glorified. And may you be pleased. And I ask you, Father, on behalf of these people, this holy assembly before you today, may your grace fall down from heaven and fill every heart that sincerely stands up to be counted. Open the windows of heaven. Let your light shine and beam down upon everyone. And let the power that comes only from your mighty love and your everlasting power heal our brokenness so we can live for you. So we can live with you. So we can live in you. And we can live 
like you. It's impossible for us to do it, but by your power, it is possible. Touch us, O Lord. Continue to change us.